Good morning, everyone. Welcome here to First Baptist Church this morning. Glad to see everybody here. Glad to see some people coming back from vacations. And so uh, we're just glad we could worship here together this morning. Just a few announcements that I'd like to highlight this morning is that uh, this afternoon at 530, there will be a Wanner Leaders meeting. So if you're in a Wanner Leader, there'll be a meeting here followed with a meal. And so we'd like to have everybody here to just have our... Um, uh, get all of our information together and get it out to all the leaders. Also, next Sunday is our uh, church picnic after the morning service. So there'll be, I understand, some inflatables here for Saturday night and for Sunday. So I uh, invite everybody to stay uh, for, the, for the picnic after the morning service and time of games and, and a lot of good things together. And also, if you're able to, on the 25th, our church is responsible for serving for the Bread of Life in George. And so there is a sign-up sheet out on the, on the table there. And so we'd like to have as many people to help with it as possible, which would be great. And um, also to go with that, uh, with the WANA, uh, on the 20, the night before our picnic is our WANA registration. So all the kids can come out to be registered for a WANA for the next coming year and some time with some fun and games. So uh, with that, that's all announcements that I have, unless I missed any. If not, let's go to our time of worship. And I would ask if you would pray with me as we open our service. Lord, we give you thanks again this morning that we could join here to worship you. We thank you for the sunshine and for the nice weather you've given to us, Lord. And, and we just pray that now our minds would be focused on you. And as we worship you and as we worship that your, our worship would be pleasing to you. And that uh, you would bless us richly for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would ask you if you would take your hymnals to hymn number 11, and we're going to sing Praise Him, Praise Him. We're going to sing all three verses, followed by hymn number 56. We'll sing To God Be the Glory, and we'll sing all three verses of those also. So if you would stand with me, and we'll sing Praise Him.
if you turn over hymn number 56, and we'll sing all three verses of those. Thank you for your singing. You may be seated, and at this time we'll call Jeff on for some special music. How 
high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness My loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? One heart could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory. To wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ. My living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope.
Thank you, Jeff. At this time, we'll call the kids forward for the children's story as Kayla will be joining us. So come on up. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys? Take a seat. All right. So I want to know how many of you guys have ever been to a wedding? You guys been to a wedding? Yeah, I bet everyone has. Well, a wedding is a very special celebration. And do you think it's easy to plan a wedding? Like if somebody wanted to get married, how about this? Derek and Leah, Leah usually does the story time, they're going to get married. Do you think they could get married next week? Are they, is, would they be ready? I don't think so. A wedding takes a long time to plan. It takes months and months to get ready for the wedding. They have to choose where they're going to get married. They have to choose the kind of music they want, what kind of cake they want, food. They have to have them make a guest list and send out invitations. There's lots. Oh, and Leah, she would have to find a dress. The guys all have to get fancy tuxes to wear. They have to get flowers. Can't forget that one. So there's lots and lots of planning to go into a wedding, isn't there? So they, and then at last comes the day of the wedding, right? They're planning and planning. It's a day full of smiles and laughing and pictures and eating and lots and lots of fun. Well, did you know, did you know that all of us, God's people, we have been asked to go to a wedding? In fact, we will be the bride. Listen to this. It says, then I heard a roaring sound. It was like a great crowd of people in heaven. They shouted, Praise the Lord. Let's be glad. It's time for the Lamb's wedding. His bride is ready. She is wearing clean, bright clothes. Well, in this, in this verse, the bride is us. We're the people and we're the bride. And we, and the clothes that we have, stand for the right things that we do. So, in God's people, we are called the church. And the church is like a bride for Jesus. Someday we will all be with him and we'll live with him forever. So he's planning a great big celebration for us for someday. And right now we are all getting ready. We're here to help each other choose to do what's right and good and to help each other obey Jesus no matter what happens. It's like getting ready for our wedding. It will be the best celebration ever. Because remember that in, our, in every day we're getting ready for a big celebration in heaven kind of like a wedding, right? All right, let's thank God for, for planning that big day for us. Dear God, thank you for planning a great party with Jesus. Help us to get ready by choosing the right things to do every day. Amen. All right, thanks, guys. You may go sit down. Thank you, Kayla. Landon said he was going to stay up here and help me, he said, so. <laughs> you like to help? <laughs> Just thinking about it. It's like we took a couple of grandkids home on Friday to back to their parents. I met them about halfway, and I says to the youngest ones, you ready to go back to see your mom and dad? He says, no, I want to come back with you, he says. <laughs> but once he saw his dad, then it was different, so then it was better, so. So yeah, well thank you, Kayla. Um, this time we're gonna go through our time of prayer, and if you have your prayer sheets available with you, or uh, look at this coming week, uh, uh, just a couple of them, like, just kind of the highlight is that Sherilyn had surgery this past week on her foot, and she is at home and doing well, as well as for Brad Van Tubergen, he had surgery uh, for his big toe removed, kind of emergency surgery. But uh, he is at home doing well and uh, recovering, so we can be praying for those as well as others that have had surgeries recently and recovering and for those that are suffering from different cancers and different illnesses as well, so we can be in prayer for those. 
So at this time, we'd just like to have you just take one of these people on your list, pray for them, and then I will uh, pray out loud. Father, give you thanks again this morning that we could gather here to worship you. And as part of our worship, we come to a time of prayer and where we can bring our praises to you and as well as our requests and our concerns. And, and Lord, we just thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who died the cross at Calvary, that we could have this freedom, we could have salvation, and that we could just be here today just to worship you. Lord, we just give you thanks so much for how you've blessed us again this past week, how well the crops are looking and as well as uh, uh, keeping us safe, Lord, we just give you so much thanks for that. Lord, we know that um, there are many around here that are a lot less fortunate, Lord, and, and we are thinking of those and we're praying for those, and Lord, we just ask to be with each one. We think of those this morning that are shut-ins and those in our nursing homes that would probably really love to be here this morning but are unable to. So, Lord, we want to be praying for those as well as they are probably praying for us right now and uh, asking for your blessing upon our time here together. Lord, we just give you thanks for the country that we live in. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy, and we want to just be praying for those that serve to protect our country. Lord, we, as they're away from their families, some are in harm's way, and Lord, we just ask that you be with each one, whether they're overseas or whether within uh, this country, and also for their families. Lord, we just thank you for their service, for their willingness to uh, put their own lives aside uh, just to serve uh, our country and our country's interests. Lord, we just pray for our president and as well as all of our leaders in our country. Lord, we just pray that they would look to you uh, for guidance and for making decisions. And, and Lord, that uh, you would bless this country. And we just uh, give you thanks in advance for it. Lord, we think of those that have had surgeries this past week. We think of Sherilyn and for Brad. And uh, we thank you that the surgeries have gone well and that they've gone home and that they're recovering. And Lord, we just pray that for that uh, continued recovery process and that they would uh, uh, continue to gain strength and be, uh, have less pain that is associated with these surgeries. Lord, we also pray for those that had surgeries recently. And Lord, we just pray that you would be with each one as they continue to recover and as well as uh, as uh, be with them as just to give them patience during this time. Lord, we also think of those that have been suffering from cancers and, and some of these other diseases like RSV, Lord. We know there has been many. And Lord, you know the needs of each one. And Lord, we just uh, uh, thank you that we could uh, bring these uh, our concerns to you. Lord, we just know that there are even this morning some unspoken requests and lord you know what their needs are this morning and we know uh, that you will be with them and lord we just pray that uh, that you would watch over each one and and that you would uh, uh, help them during this time lord we also uh, thank you for all that are here this morning lord we just pray that as we come to worship you and lord we know that that uh, you will be happy with our worship and that uh, we will be blessed. So, Lord, as now, as we uh, continue this morning, Lord, we just ask that we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. This time, we'd like to call for the ushers for the morning offering. And as you can see from the flags this morning, it's mission offering, and our focus is on the United States.
And I'd ask you to stand with me as I sing the doxology. Lord, we thank you again this morning that we could be here to worship you. And as part of our worship, we can be able to give back to you a portion of what you so richly bless us with. Lord, we thank you um, for how you've been with us this past week. And Lord, we just pray now as we give of this offering to support missionaries here and abroad, that these monies would be used to the, the furtherance of your gospel. And that we thank you for each gift that is given and that you would bless each giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And at this time, we'd like to call again upon Dallas, and we thank you for his willingness to share with us this morning and whatever the Lord has led upon his heart. This way be better. I, I've been thinking for the last several weeks, you guys seem so far away. <laughs> so I thought it'd be easier for me to come down here than to ask all of you to come up this way. So what was that line from the Battle of Bunker Hill Bunker Hill? Don't don't start shooting until you see the whites of their eyes. And I can see the whites of your eyes. So, let's pray. Lord, I pray that this message will be fruitful in our lives, that um, it will increase our love for you as we understand how much you love us, and that your, your power would speak through your word by your spirit and that we will be encouraged and strengthened and uh, shine brighter with your light and uh, be salt for the earth, for the communities around us and that we would be, again, faithful to represent you and let your image in us be more clear, more pure, more evident in our lives to the world around us. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm going to refer to the Olympics again. I did that last week. They ended a week ago. And um, if you watched much of any of it, I'm sure you saw and heard many instances of heartbreak and disappointments where things didn't go so well for one reason or another. But there are also the stories of inspiration and encouragement where you saw somebody just rise to the top and uh, do their best. And one of the stories that really struck me was uh, one of the lady gymnasts, Jade Carey, and uh, she was to compete in two individual events. One of them was the vault, and that's where the ladies would run down a, a piece of, of carpet or mat, about 82 feet, I think I saw on the internet, 82 feet long, and they'd get to the end of it, and then they'd typically do some kind of a handspring onto a springboard, which would then catapult them up into the air, and they would plant their hands on a 
vaulting table, which is about four feet high, and then they'd push off that and do some more twists and turns and somersaults and hopefully land on their feet in bounds on the mat on the other side. So, Kerry was to compete in that one day and did not go well. She finished last and she finished last by quite a ways. And uh, if you happen to see it, you know, tears in her eyes and uh, she was consoled by her coach who also happened to be her father and uh, that didn't go so well at all. The other individual event she was to compete in was the next day and that was called the floor exercise. And that's a big mat, like a huge wrestling mat, about 45 feet by 45 feet. And the ladies would stand on one corner of the mat and take a run at the other corner and jump and somersault and twist and turn and hopefully land on their feet on, on the mat in the corner, inbounds. And then they'd catch their breath doing a few things and then they'd run toward the other corner and they would jump in the air and twist and turn and somersault and land on their feet in bounds and maybe try a third one. They had two minutes or so to do all this. So she was going to compete in that the next day and the next day her father told her, you may feel like yesterday was one of the worst days of your life, but today can be the best. Yesterday is over, Let's go get it. And she did. She got the gold. And I say, good for you. You didn't let that failure from the previous day, if you want to call it a failure, she was still in the Olympics. But she, she put it behind her. And she focused on what she needed to do that day. And it went very, very well. So I thought that was a very good illustration of what we started to look at last week when Paul said forget the things that are behind and I mentioned a couple of things first of all he was going to forget about the shame the guilt the condemnation because he had done some awful things before he came to Jesus but he could forget about that because in Christ there is no condemnation your sins are forgiven he could also and needed to forget about the pride. You know, before again he came to Christ, he was a very arrogant man by his own admission. He thought he was very self-righteous. You know, look at who I am. Look at the things I'm doing for God, he thought, when actually he was working against God. So he had to forget about that. And he also had to forget about whatever pride he might have in his heart for the things he did as a believer, as an apostle, a missionary who did wonderful things throughout the Roman Empire. But you can't let pride take root in your heart about that either. So, Paul said, forget the things that are behind. And like Jade Carey's father said, let's focus on what's ahead. When I was in college, I had uh, a number of friends who were on the track team and just hanging out with them, usually several times a week, I would often hear them say what their coach told them, when you're in a race, focus on the finish line. You know, some of the guys are cross country runners and they wouldn't see the finish line until they got to the last few hundred yards. And uh, some of the shorter distance runners, you know, running their, their laps around the track, it wasn't until that gun lap, so, so to speak, or the bell lap, that you would see the finish line, the tape across it. And you might feel like you're just dying at that point, right? You have <laughs> nothing left to give. But the coach said, just look at the finish line and don't think about how hard it is or how exhausted you are which is what Paul said we should do. It's in Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to back up to what we started looking at last week. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind 
Okay, and here's what we're going to pick up this morning. And straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on, straining toward what is ahead, pressing on to the goal. Paul's life had been hard. And if again you read the last half of the book of Acts, as he's going through these missionary journeys, <laughs> he's persecuted. <laughs> he's on the other end of what he used to do. And he would be beaten. He, would, he was stoned at least once. He was put in prison several times, all on false charges. And, and if you don't want to read the full account in Acts, uh, there's a couple of shorter versions that he himself recounted in 2 Corinthians chapters 6 and 11. And he includes a lot of other things that uh, weren't recorded by Luke in Acts. He just had an awful time, physically, emotionally. And as I mentioned last week, when he wrote this letter to the Philippian church, he was in prison in Rome, which couldn't have been easy. But in spite of that hardship, he was pressing on. He was straining forward. And apparently what most Christians and professors in, in Christian colleges think was the last letter Paul wrote, 2 Timothy, in that letter, when he could definitely see the finish line ahead of him, he said, I have fought the good fight. I've you know, finished the race. I've kept the faith, you know, I have stayed true, mission accomplished. There are things in our lives that have a termination point. You go to school, probably all of us graduated from somewhere, <laughs> high school, maybe college, whatever, that's, that's the end of your schooling. You got your diploma, you put the tassel on the other side of your motorboard, and you're done. Some go into the military, and however long you're serving, two, th three years, 20 years, 40 years, at a certain point, you're discharged. You're done. Or you work some job, some occupation, some kind of career, and at some point, Inevitably, if you're still alive, you retire and you say, that's it, I'm done. For the Christian life, you're not done until you're really done. And I'm going to quote the great theologian Yogi Berra, an old catcher for the New York Yankees who said some very famous things, and he once said, it ain't over until it's over. And that's true for the Christian life. It ain't over until it's over. And it ain't over until you see Jesus face to face. Either he comes down and says, that's it, this is the end of the world, or we're going up to see him. That, like Paul said, you know, I have fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. He could say that at the end. For us as believers, there, there's no point where we quit loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. There's no point in our lives where we stop loving our neighbors as ourselves. There's no point where we keep loving or serving, using whatever gifts he's given us, and that can change as we get older or we get in different situations, but the point is we keep straining ahead, pressing on until we get to that goal. So what keeps us from getting tired, discouraged? Well, if you watch again the Olympics, it seemed like every event, after the race was over or after the competition for pole vaulting or shot putting or swimming or whatever it was, they interviewed the athletes, right? <laughs> and they're, you know, they're exhausted, they're trying to catch their breath. But there's quite a change in most cases, if they had any kind of close-up of the athletes as they were competing, especially in races, 
you would see the pain and the strain and the sweat on their foreheads. You know, it was hot there in Tokyo. They were talking about heat indexes above 100 degrees on some days. I can't imagine competing in that kind of condition, but they would strain. You could see the pain, the effort, and then the race is over. And a couple minutes later, there they are in front of the TV cameras for the whole world to see. And if they won, or at least got a second or a third, they got some kind of medal, maybe a world record somewhere around the race, they were all smiles. <laughs> wow. And they would inevitably say it was worth it. Whatever training they had gone through five years since the last Olympics, to get to where they were at that point and to run the race and to run it well, it was worth it. That is what Paul was talking about here. To win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What was the prize Paul was talking about? Well, back to that letter in 2 Timothy where he said, I've run the, the race, I've fought a good fight, I've kept the faith. Then he says, and now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing, which should hopefully and should be any believer. So Paul encouraged us to have the same attitude he had. To press on for that crown of righteousness. In the Olympics, whatever they might have won is temporary. They might have gotten a world record. And as they say, records are made to be broken. Inevitably, somebody somewhere down the line is going to break your record. Probably not too far down the line. Might be a year, two years, five, ten, but it's going to happen. And the medals, you know, gold, silver, bronze. Oh, the medals will last in this world, but as Jesus has said, you can't take it with you. Whenever we die, or whenever this world is over, that's, that's all going to be left behind. It's all temporary. Or as Jesus once said in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, don't, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where, you know, you know, the moth and the rust and the thieves can just steal it and ruin it and, and destroy it. Lay up treasures in heaven because that's eternal. Paul again writing to the Corinthians. And they had Olympics back in those days, you know, with Greece. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. The wise thing for us to do is not again to be concerned about what we can accrue here, or what we can accrue and build up and store for ourselves up there and be waiting for us, which is what Jesus did. Hebrews chapter 12, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And it's different for everybody. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him in heaven endured the cross, scorning its shame, and then sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Another phrase I've often heard, keep your eyes on the prize. Paul did what Jesus did, or what the Olympic athletes did. They kept their eyes on the prize. They thought about what's on the other side of the finish line. I'm going to train so hard for four, for five years in this instance, and I'm going to sweat, and I'm going to work out, and I'm just going to think about what's on the other side of the finish line. It might be a world record. It, it might be a a medal. That's what Paul said. I'm going to keep thinking about what's on the other side, the prize to which God has called me heavenward, heavenward in Christ Jesus. It's what Jesus looked at 
when he had to go to the cross. He endured it because he was looking at the, the joy that was going to await him when he got back to heaven and could sit down at the right hand of the Father. To keep your eyes on the prize. And that awaits all of us who believe in Jesus and follow him and stay true to him. Don't quit. Those Olympic athletes who qualified for the Olympics, they didn't quit just to get there. And when they got there, they, they gave it their all. When they're in the race, they looked at the finish line and they also thought about what's on the other side of the finish line. And it was worth it. So, don't quit. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the perfecter the author, the finisher of our faith. Let's pray. Lord, to pray for all of us. We, uh, if we're young, we can, I think we got a lot of time ahead of us to, to train, to prepare for, for the life that, that we need to live. But what an advantage for us to start the training when we're young so that we're wiser we're purer, we're more loving as we raise our families. Or if we're older, Lord, it can be a temptation to think, well, I'm just gonna coast from here on in. I'm just gonna sit back and just wait for that finish line to come to me. But that's not what Paul did, it's not what you did, and it's not what you want us to do. You want us again to press on. And I pray we will keep in mind the joy that awaits us in heaven, no matter how close or how far it might be. Because once we get there, we're going to say it was worth it. And we're going to be all smiles when we see you face to face, our Savior who loves us more than anybody ever has or ever can or will. So let us do that, Lord, and let your spirit and your word work in us to encourage us day by day and moment by moment. And let us help each other to keep that in mind as well. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our last song is number 575, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. If you would stand, please. We'll sing all three verses. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. The path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.